Good morning, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Mac City Morning Show. I am your host, Elliot Pierre, and as per usual, we're going to start this episode the same way we start off every episode, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, so the fact that you're spending with us truly does mean the world to me. So thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. All right, and we're back. Now, as you can tell, we're not on the set of the Max City Morning Show. Um, I'm actually on a business trip, and I'm in Winnipeg. And uh, I'm staying in an awesome hotel, um, ran by some awesome individuals. And I figured, hey, I might as well give them some shine. So, as everybody knows, at this point of the show, I don't introduce myself, or my guests, sorry, because they could do a better job than I. So on that note, sir, can you please tell everybody at home who you are and what you're about? Excellent. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me, Elliot. So my name is Joel Waterman. I'm the general manager here at the Inn at the Forks. Inn at the Forks is a 116-room boutique uh, lifestyle hotel here in Winnipeg. It's located on the campus of the Forks, which is Winnipeg's top tourist destination. If you're thinking dining, shopping, river trails, uh, getting out on the boat, uh, all kinds of stuff going on down here, and more to come over the next 20 years as they develop the rail side portion of the of the campus here. So. Uh, that's who I am in at the Forks as part of the Sparrow Hotel portfolio. So we manage or own three hotels here in the city. Okay. Uh, lots of restaurants. We have a Riverstone Spa downstairs as well, which is a beautiful spa. And then we operate uh, catering and restaurant operations in some of Winnipeg's top institutions as well. Wow. So yeah. pretty busy. We're pretty busy. Pretty Absolutely. busy. That's Absolutely. awesome. Yeah. So how long has this establishment been in place? So this hotel uh, was built in 2004. Uh, okay. The Forks has been around for about 25 years, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, and the hotel was developed, you know, shortly after things started popping up on the site here. Right. Uh, our parent company, we own uh, one of the other hotels that we operate is the Norwood Hotel in St. Boniface in the French Quarter of Winnipeg. Right. Uh, and our the family that owns our, uh, our company, they the grandfather of our current CEO, he bought that hotel in 1937. So we're the longest standing family owned hotel company in all of Western Canada. Okay. Yeah. And you yourself, are you from Winnipeg? I am born and raised in Winnipeg. Okay. Uh, so I spent many years at a Hilton property. I've been in the industry for almost 25 years now. Okay. Uh, brief foray to Regina for uh, about a year and a half. I operated, uh, managed a hotel there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I love this hotel, love this company and the location you can't get better. That's right. right. So, yeah. In regards to the hotel industry, obviously, like you said, 20 plus years in it, how did you first get attracted in, or into it? Yeah, it's funny that you asked that. Uh, I think it's a common story amongst hoteliers. I kind of came in the side door, if you will. So okay. <laughs> uh, I always thought I would probably be doing something maybe similar to you. Uh, yeah. You know, I was uh, pursued stage acting a little bit in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of thought I'd maybe be doing journalism, broadcasting, something along those lines. But at some point along the way, uh, I took a course to be a certified travel agent, was hoping to maybe travel a little bit, work in the Caribbean, those types of things. And right. <laughs> ended up working in a hotel uh, and I've never looked back. I've had any job you can imagine in the industry almost, okay. but uh, really enjoy the a lot of it, but marketing and the yield management, the financial side of things and that that bodes well if you want to sort of rise to the top and be a GM for sure. Cool. Yeah. Did you ever make it down to the Caribbean? Uh, no, I've been to Mexico, but not to the Caribbean. So okay. one day, one, one day, day for put sure. put it on the bucket list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I've had the fortune to travel a little bit around the Caribbean through my life. It's definitely, it's a cool spot. Yes, I bet. It's a cool spot to go to. I bet. So growing up in Winnipeg, as uh, me and my business partner here were traveling, um, what are certain things that we should go check out? So, um, you know, Winnipeg, sometimes it's a little bit underrated you know we're in the heart of the continent here um you know we don't have some of the pizzazz that maybe some of the torontos and vancouvers do but mm -hmm. um it's a fantastic city uh one thing for sure is the local arts and music scene here in winnipeg is amazing right uh, a little bit depressed with the covid uh, pandemic right now as live theater and live music has been been uh you know put to the sidelines but yeah uh you know prairie theater exchange manitoba theater center we've got an amazing fringe festival in the summer okay um summer you know winnipeggers take full advantage of summer so there's during normal times there's a different type of festival theater, cultural, food, whatever, every weekend. Right. Uh, amazing food scene here, for yeah. sure. Um, just, uh, you know, 
it's a very uh, diverse multicultural city, so you have mm -hmm. a lot of ethnic influences in the food. We've been noticing that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but then a lot of talent as well in the last few years where just these amazing small little dining rooms are popping up and small plates and just a lot of imagination that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mentioned St. Boniface. It's the largest, uh, it's the largest French neighborhood outside of Quebec in all of Canada. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of history there. Yeah. Uh, you've got the Exchange District just uh, sort of north of us here. We which spent is, some time there. Yeah, amazing architecture. Amazing, man. Yeah. Amazing. Turn of the century, it was, uh, Winnipeg was being called the Chicago of the North. So, right. um, great neighborhood to walk around, check out little restaurants, little shops. Uh, I like it in the fall and winter as well. Like, you know, it's summer right now, but yeah. you know, winter time is amazing to walk around there. Right. Obviously the Forks, um, yeah. Assiniboine Park uh, and the zoo, they're doing a lot of great things. There's the new diversity gardens that are just opening up now. Yeah. Uh, the Winnipeg Art Gallery just opened up uh, the new Inuit Art Center, uh, mm -hmm. which is, uh, is named uh, an Anuktitut name, uh, Homayuk. Okay. Um, which is the largest collection of Inuit art in the world. So there's amazing pieces there. The building itself, uh, designed by Michael Maltzen, is just an amazing uh, experience in itself just to yeah. be in the building. Okay. Uh, and then just across the way from us is the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. That's right. We're going to go check that out tomorrow. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So it's the only national museum uh, in the country that's not in Ottawa. Uh, and it's, okay. It opened in fall of 2014. Okay. Um, it's an amazing experience. You know, pretty much have to block the whole day. Just uh, it's, a, it's an emotional uh, experience to be in that building and, and see some of the exhibits for sure. Okay. Yeah. Now the cool thing, like you have a beautiful hotel, like the amenities in this hotel are great. My room is phenomenal. I'm really awesome. liking it. Um, but you mentioned it before, like we are at the Forks. There's tons of different things to do here. So yeah. this hotel, although beautiful, and I like the word you use, boutique, yeah, because it has that like kind of intimate feeling for sure. It does. But you're in the heart of everything from like you said, the Forks Market, you have the museum there. I, across the hall or street is a children's museum as well. Children's museum, So yeah. I'm like a six-year-old little boy, and he's been to Winnipeg with me before, but I never knew about that museum. What's that about? Yeah, so the children's museum, um, it's been, I, I, you're gonna put me on the spot to guess how long it's been around, probably about the same time frame as the hotel. Okay. Um, very interactive museum, so you go in there, you know, you got some of the traditional things for kids like slides and different stuff, but okay. you got arts and crafts, you got climbing things, you got, it's it's uh, something for them to have fun, but they're always they're also gonna learn a little bit as well. Right. Uh, lots of interactive type uh, components to the museum. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> big spaces, very safe. Uh, they got a cool train with all the bells and whistles of the train that the nice. kids can get on and sit yeah. in the seats and check out the engine and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. Um, so that's great. And and the forks and all the amenities here, I mean, you know, the history and the significance of the forks, obviously, is a meeting, meeting place for thousands of years uh, right. where the two rivers meet. But um, they've done a tremendous job because it's it's so locally focused. There's no not to kind of disparage the Starbucks of the world and stuff, but there's no brands on site here we've, at the Forks. We've definitely noticed that. Yeah, yeah. there's no brands. It's all all local. Uh, so, um, and you're seeing a bit of a changing of the guard after the first, I think, set of leases from the first 20 years or whatever sort of mm -hmm. ended. So you're seeing a bit of new fresh blood as far as the partners that are on site. Right. Um, about three, four years ago, they put in the common. So. You can now get a beer, a glass of wine, and walk around the site with it. And That's right. Food options are amazing. Yeah. Uh, so it's a cool place to be. It really is. Like the, like I said, the hotel in itself is amazing. But just in this area alone, we're here for a number of days. But just this area alone, you don't have to leave. And we have not even scratched the surface of what we've seen here. Absolutely. If you're coming to Winnipeg, this is a beautiful hotel stay. And just because. You could you're in walking distance of so many things. Yeah, you you nailed it. It's and that's the feedback we overwhelmingly get from all of our guests. Yeah. Um, very positive feedback. And I mean, like I said, I've been in the industry for many years. I've managed four hotels. This mm -hmm. managing this hotels, it's it's a different animal altogether. The other right. ones, you're so focused on what your competitors are doing, what your market share is. We we have great market share here, but. We're insulated. We're a different type of hotel, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that we have some, we have a little bit of built-in demand, but we just have all these things at our fingertips. And for a guest, they just walk out the door and 
and you can go to any restaurant. You can just walk across the bridge to St. Boniface. You can, mm -hmm. you know, five, ten minutes, you're in the Exchange District, mm -hmm. walk along the rivers. Yeah. Uh, and so many interesting things yeah. to see just right, right outside your door. Yeah, you can even do, we walked, you can do a riverboat cruise. Yeah. And literally two minutes down the road, there's a beach where you can go hang out. There's some comfy chairs, and all of a sudden we just saw these boats going back and forth. 40 bucks we went for a tour and we're able to do like an architectural boat tour historical tour yes of winnipeg find out tons about like the metis and l'oreal and golden boy and yeah it was really neat it is it's amazing I, my, my i've got two daughters uh, at home myself and they they always want to get on that boat whenever we're down here at yeah. the forks it's fun yeah and i think it's a it can, will continue to be an opportunity for winnipeg to sort of uh, grow that tourist piece around the rivers. Right. Um, in the winter, it's amazing. Uh, the Forks pre-COVID actually started to, probably for the last two years pre-COVID, report more visitors to the site in the winter than the summer, oh, amazingly. Really? <clears throat> so the river's frozen and you know, you've know you got uh, the warming huts competition every year. So you got artists from all over the world that are putting up these warming huts. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of art installations around the site uh, and they're cycled them out every couple of years people skating, playing a quick game of shanty, or, yeah. you know, just some yeah. really fun stuff that are people on the river down there. It's a really cool vibe Winnipeg has. And I know um, I've been here just my third trip, my business partner, it's his first, and we're already saying like, we gotta come back. Like, it's an eclectic vibe from the architecture, like you said, from the diversity of the people and the food, and like just the creativity and the energy here is really cool. It is, it yeah. is. We, I think for a while there, when uh, our first uh, Jets incarnation left, yeah. we, uh, you know, we were, a little, we were on a little bit of a self-deprecating arc for a little while. Right. Uh, but the last 10, 12 years, Winnipeg's seeing a boom and, you know, you got these major institutions like the museum and the, and the Inuit Art Center and different yeah. stuff going up. Uh, you're seeing uh, quite a bit of construction and, and uh, r more residents in the downtown. Mm -hmm. So just if you took a walk, from here to one of the other hotels we manage, the Mirror on Waterfront Drive. Oh, we saw that one. That yeah. was cool. The it's architecture neat. on the outside of that building very is neat. something else. Yes, yeah. very neat, neat property. So um, that whole stretch there, I mean, there's probably a dozen restaurants that weren't there 10 years ago. Right. Tons of condos that weren't there years ago. So yeah. uh, we're on the upswing for that's sure. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Sweet. Well, listen, man, that's the end of the time that we have. I yeah. want to thank you very much for taking the time to sit and chat with me today. It's no been problem. awesome because I kind of just asked and you said, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, how the show works at the end of the show, though, everybody gets a shameless plug. A shameless okay. plug, a shout out. So for sure. the mic's yours. What do you want to shout out? What do you want to plug? Sounds good. I mean, like I said, in at the Forks, you're going to come to uh, Winnipeg's top tourist destination. Um, you know, we've got all kinds of packages that you can book where you're going to get tickets to the museum, you're going to get tickets to the art gallery, you're going to get some really cool uh, welcome amenities and, you know, chocolates and different kinds of food and stuff from some of the most unique and, and iconic uh, partners in the city here. Yeah. Uh, I think we recapped it best, right? Like you're at the heart of uh, Winnipeg, you got so many things that you can do within just walking distance. Uh, Smith restaurant downstairs, really cool vibe. Our yeah. chef is amazing. Uh, easily one of the most successful restaurants in the city. And mm -hmm. then, you know, make sure you book in advance, but Riverstone Spa is uh, go for a massage, go for a pedicure, manicure, whatever you want. But uh, it's a very relaxing, serene spa. Uh, you kind of almost forget where you are and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. So you can't you can't beat uh, coming to this property. I know I'm gonna probably say that with a bit of a biased lens, but it's all right. It was one of my favorite spots to be long before I came uh, came to be a, an employee of the company. So you, you can't uh, you can't go wrong if you book with us. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. Well, for McMurray Wood Buffalo and the rest of the world, that's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show in Winnipeg. Thank you very much again for tuning in. It truly does mean the world to me, so thank you. On that note, hopefully you're having a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. What a deadly old way to end another morning show. Later, boss. It's so ballistic! <laughs> Talk about quenching your ugly thirst. Really?